Nobody can see the great Oz. Not nobody, not know how. Oh, oh, please, please, sir. I've got to see the wizard. I'll hit the subscribe button. Why didn't you say that in the first place? Come on in! You have to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. So we meet this girl Dorothy, running home to tell her aunt and uncle that somebody's tried to hurt her dog. But they're busy trying to save a bunch of baby chicks that might freeze to death because of a broken incubator. But she's like, screw those chicks, stop what you're doing, and listen to me. Well, why would you tell me this story? Look, you have to get an idea of how crappy living in Kansas is, even if it's ignoring the abuse of one animal because an incubator is killing other ones. So when they won't listen, she goes to complain to the farmhands. Hunk tells her to use her brain and to not walk past Mrs. Gulch's house because then she won't beat her dog. And then she tells him he's not listening to her. Zeke tells her to stand up for herself and spit on her. And then Dorothy falls into a pigsty and he has to save her. But she comes out perfectly clean and everyone calls Zeke a pussy for being scared for her. Gonna let a little old pig make a coward out of you? But Mrs. Gulch shows up to the farm saying she wants to kill Toto for biting her and she'll sue them for the farm if they don't comply. Cause you always get yourself into a fret over nothing. When they protest, she pulls out an order from the sheriff saying that she can take the dog to the sheriff because apparently he's too lazy to go there himself. Or she's just some Karen that knows that they won't know what the sheriff's handwriting looks like. But being the rich lady in town doesn't mean she's smart, because she just puts Toto in a wicker basket, and he jumps out and runs back home. Curse it! Curse it! But Dorothy realizes that she'll just come back, so she automatically thinks, let's run away from home. I'm sorry, but running away from home to keep your dog alive sounds pretty reasonable to me. Well, that may be, but are you dumb enough to ask a 50-year-old carny if you can travel the world with him after only knowing him for less than a minute? Because she is. Please, Professor, why can't we go with you and see all the crown heads of Europe? She's also stupid enough to go inside his trailer with him. But he's a stand-up guy for a con artist, and tells her that Annie M might have just had a heart attack. So Dorothy heads home, right as the storm starts up. I'm a very good man. I'm just a very bad wizard. Everyone at home is getting into the storm cellar, but Annie M is the only one who gives a shit about where Dorothy is. And Dorothy stupidly goes into the house, when a tornado is so close that it's uprooting trees and ripping the screen door off its hinges. But then she goes to the storm cellar, but those old farts have locked it. So she goes inside and stands directly in front of a window and gets knocked the fuck out. But she wakes up pretty fast to find out that her house is flying. And being inside of a tornado must not be that big of a deal because she sees other people in it too and they're just as happy as can be. Except Mrs. Gulch. She turns into a witch and flies away. But then it starts to fall and that's a bit scary. But then she lands <laughs> And when she goes outside, everything's, um, plastic. And Captain Obvious thinks that there might be something strange afoot. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. All of a sudden, a bubble comes at her and a witch pops out of it. Glenda tells her that she just killed some broad, but don't worry, she was evil. But she wants to know if Dorothy is a good witch or a bad witch, and then tells us that only bad witches are ugly. So I'm sure her self-esteem took a hit on that one. I am hideous? You are horrifying to look at. But she's a hero to the little people of the land for killing the lady, and they all come out of the bushes to meet her. They sing about how happy they are that the lady died, and give her a carriage ride that lasts about 16 feet. The mayor and the city council are all like, hold on, don't celebrate yet, she might still be alive. But then someone comes along to confirm that the house landing on the woman did in fact kill her. So they go back to celebrating her demise. But she's not truly welcome until the Lullaby League and the Lollipop Guild come to greet her. Like the guy who wanted Noah to die? Yeah, those guys are really into death. But Glenda isn't the only one that heard of the Wicked Witch of the East's death. Her sister, the Wicked Witch of the West, shows up and scares the crap out of the munchkins. She wants to kill Dorothy for killing her sister, but Glenda's like, wouldn't you rather have your sister's shoes? And she's like, hell yeah. But then they magically go on Dorothy's feet. So now the Wicked Witch has two reasons to kill her, neither of which are her fault. And we know how having your family murdered can affect even the best people. I don't care. He killed my mom. I'll kill him myself. But for some reason, her magic won't work here, so she threatens Dorothy and then fucks off in a cloud of smoke. Which is magic. So if the Munchkins know that her magic doesn't work here, and they just saw another Wicked Witch get killed by a house, why didn't one of these 16 guards try to shoot her? Because he is a... I don't... Okay. Glinda tells her that she made a powerful enemy by the Wicked Witch of the East standing in the wrong spot, and then Glinda stealing the dead chick's shoes, so she should try to get home as quick as she can. She also says that she should talk to the Wizard of Oz, because he might know how to get her back. And to get there, all she has to do is follow the Yellow Brick Road, instead of Glinda taking her in her magic bubble. Glinda reminds her never to take the shoes off, or the witch can kill her. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. 
But Dorothy has several follow-up questions, but Glinda doesn't have time for her crap and fucks off in her bubble. So Dorothy is too stupid to just start walking on the yellow brick road and has to start at the very first brick or else she might get lost or something. Think you didn't have any brains at all. But she comes to a place where the road splits, which is bullshit because she was told just to follow the road and she'll reach the Emerald City. But then she hears a scarecrow giving her directions. Once she lets him down, he wants to go with her, so she lets him guide her after a long discussion about him not having a brain. Which way? That's the trouble. I can't make up my mind. I haven't got a brain. This way! They then come across an orchard where the trees get pissed off that they're trying to pick apples off them, so to punish them, they throw apples at them until they leave. And while they're picking them up, Dorothy finds a metal guy. He's rusted over, so they grab some lube and start putting oil all over him. And when they're done, he mentions that he doesn't have a heart. So after he does some Michael Jackson moves for him, They say that he can go to the Emerald City with them and hope that the wizard just harvests organs that he can give out to people who randomly show up to his house. Now, straight your business! To get him a heart. And him a brain. Why didn't you say that in the first place? Come on in! <laughs> but then the Wicked Witch shows up and warns him not to help her, and then she throws a fireball at the Scarecrow. But this just makes him want to help her more, and they hit the road. They enter a forest where they can hear a bunch of animals, and the Scarecrow's worried that some of them will eat his straw, but the Tin Man comforts him by saying that they're more likely to run into animals that eat flesh instead. So they make sure to be as loud as possible to stay safe. Lions and tigers and bears! Oh my! Which attracts a lion who wants to fist fight him. Put him up, put him up! And they're all scared until he goes after Toto, and then Dorothy smacks him on the nose, and he starts crying like a baby. So what organ is the lion missing? He doesn't have any balls. The lion just acts tough, but is a big old pussy if you actually stand up to him. Pretty much like every bully. And you'd think that Dorothy would now have some sympathy for Mrs. Gulch, considering that she's in the same situation now that she was in earlier with Toto and her cat. So her hitting the lion is like Miss Gulch hitting Toto with a rake? Oh, but he doesn't do it every day! Just once or twice a week! And he can't catch her old cat anyway! I didn't buy them! No, but you tried to! So they invite him to go along with them, and hope that the wizard can give him some balls. Now that's getting personal, Lion. Don't you just love how a girl who's been in this place for like all of about an hour is already volunteering a stranger to help all four of them? But the witch is on to him and wants to slow him down, so she creates a poppy field in their path. On the other side is the Emerald City, so they take off running for it. But Dorothy, Toto, and the Lion start to get tired from all the poppies. Flowers can make you tired? Well, these can, but only if you eat or inject them. But since they're in a magical land, I guess we can let this one slide. Yes, I guess you're right. Well, this makes the guy without a heart start crying, while the guy without a brain tries to come up with a solution. But the Tin Man and the Scarecrow start screaming for help, so Glinda makes it snow, and they wake up because they're freezing their asses off now. But the Tin Man's now rusted in place, so they have to lube him up again. Yeah. Oh, oh, quick! So they get to the Emerald City, where the guard says that no one can ever see the wizard and to fuck off. But then they show him her shoes, and he's like, oh shit, come on in. Inside, they take their city name a little too seriously, and the only thing not green is the horse they take a yet another 16-foot carriage ride on. That's a horse of a different color! And then they all get complimentary makeovers, because why not? I'm just a dandelion. But their good time ends when the Wicked Witch shows up and does some sky riding. Everyone in town rushes to see the wizard so he can tell him what to do, but the guard says he's got it under control. And then the four of them try to get in, and of course, since she's Dorothy, he'll let him know she's waiting. So as they're waiting, the lion sings about being the king of a place lions aren't indigenous to, while the rest of them damage some city property so he can play dress up. But the wizard won't see him, probably because of the disrespect, and the guard tells him to leave. So Dorothy starts crying, thinking that Auntie M is dying because the con artist on the side of the road in Kansas tried to guilt trip her into not running away. But the guard hears all of this and is touched by her story, so he lets him in. When they enter, they see a giant floating head around a bunch of flames. He basically calls them all pieces of shit for wanting stuff from him, but when the lion faints, Dorothy tells him off. But then he's like, listen bitch, I'm gonna give you all that crap but you need to do something for me first. I need you to bring me the Wicked Witch's broom. But, but if we do that, we'll have to kill her to get it. He's like, well, if that's what you gotta do. So they're walking through the haunted forest when the witch sends an army of flying monkeys to get Dorothy in the slippers, which they do along with Toto, but they also messed up the scarecrow pretty good too. They tore my legs off and they threw them over there. 
The witch threatens to drown Toto in the river if she doesn't give up the shoes, so Dorothy says, okay, take them. But they shock the witch when she tries to touch him. But then she remembers, Those slippers will never come off, as long as you're alive. Then Toto runs away, and the monkeys must have forgotten that they can fly, because they just let him go. The witch gives her an hour to live, but never asks her to take off the shoes herself. Well, why not just kill her now and take the shoes? Shut up. Giving her an hour gives Toto enough time to find the others and get back to the castle. It also gives her an hour to think about how the magical place she dreamt of going to while she was in Kansas... ...is now probably going to kill her. People come and go so quickly here. So when they get there, the guy with no brain comes up with a plan for the guy with no balls to execute. And the guy with no heart is going to stay behind and cry, thinking about how she's in trouble. But they're discovered by three guards, who they manage to beat up and take their uniforms. So now the scarecrow has to come up with yet another plan, which is literally just walking behind the rest of the guards inside the castle, who must have just been outside for some fresh air or something. Toto leads them to the room that she's in, and since this is a rescue, they start yelling at the top of their lungs and take off their disguises to make them easier to find, and then leave their weapons behind after seeing how many guards are in this place. So big shocker, they're caught immediately, but the guards are directly under a chandelier that they drop on them and run away. Then the remaining guards and the witch chase them through the castle. Where do we go now? Uh, no idea. Follow me. But our friends have no idea where they're going and get cornered. So the witch wants Dorothy to watch her friends die, so she starts by setting the scarecrow on fire, either because it's easy or she's really got something against this guy. But right behind her, of course, is a bucket of water that she splashes him with. But some of it got on the witch too, and she melts. Dorothy looks at the guards and is like, whoa, that was a total accident. But the guards all bow to her and thank her for killing the witch. So they take the broom back to the wizard, and they're very proud of themselves for the murder they just committed. But Oz tells them to come back tomorrow. But none of them are taking his crap, especially not after Toto pulls back a curtain, revealing an old man with a microphone controlling the pyrotechnics. So they're pissed that he's not going to give them what they want through magic, but he still manages to bullshit his way through their gifts. He tells the scarecrow that he's smart, and then the scarecrow gets a mathematical formula wrong. Some of the square roots of any two sides of an isosceles triangle is equal to the square root of the remaining side. That is false. And is very proud of himself. He also gave him a diploma and says, Back where I come from, we have universities. They think deep thoughts, and with no more brains than you have. Showing that even back then, they knew a lot of educated people were actually morons. But some people without brains do an awful lot of talking, don't they? He tells the lion that he was brave at the castle, and gives him a medal. You always did have a scrum for that! And then he tells the tin man that he had a heart the whole time, because he actually gave a shit about other people, and they liked him back. So he gives them a heart-shaped pocket watch. But they want to know how he's going to get Dorothy home, to which he says he's actually from Kansas and got to Oz in a hot air balloon and will take her back himself. And then he takes her to said balloon that is actually from Nebraska. Close enough, I guess. But he tells the people that while he's gone, the scarecrow, who he just met, is in charge. And the lion and the tin man are going to help him. But then Toto sees a cat and chases it right after they release the balloon. So all of her problems are because she didn't train her dog not to chase cats? You know, you'd be surprised. More problems are caused by chasing pussy than you'd think. Ain't it the truth? Ain't it the truth? So the wizard just floats away because none of these new leaders were smart enough to tie it back up. So now Dorothy is sad that she'll never get to go back home, but then Glenda shows up. She begs her for help, and she's like, you could have gone back to Kansas whenever you wanted. I'm afraid you've made rather a bad enemy of the Wicked Witch of the West. The sooner you get out of Oz altogether, the safer you sleep, my dear. Tell me there's another bucket of water laying around somewhere. I mean, she already has two witches under her belt, so why not a third? But apparently, she needed to appreciate the things she had back home by missing them, even though she wanted to go home in the beginning. Oh, I'd give anything to get out of Oz altogether. Then why didn't you tell her before? Because she wouldn't have believed me. Which is bullshit, because Dorothy believed everything she said and did exactly what she was told. This lying bitch was just using Dorothy to take out another enemy. So all she has to do is click her heels together and say there's no place like home. But first, she has to tell her new friends goodbye because apparently she didn't do that before she got in the balloon. And I'm sure she makes the other two feel like shit when she says, I think I'll miss you most of all. But then she does the heel thing and wakes up in her bed. Everyone, including the carny, are there to make sure she's okay, which she is. Or at least she will be until she realizes that Mrs. Gulch is still probably going to come back to try to kill her dog. Can I still have my dog? No! Not so fast! Not so fast! I shall let the dog live if you subscribe and like this video. That's too wonderful to be true! Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain! 
I can't come back. I don't know how it works. Goodbye, folks. Go away and come back tomorrow. Oh, you go away. Oh, I'll bite you myself. Dorothy.